Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Smoked Cajun Turkey. So today we're gonna to be preparing a spatchcock style turkey pumped full of Cajun flavors. Literally, we're gonna inject this thing with Cajun butter, rub it up with some Cajun seasoning, but that's all a little bit down the road. First thing we need to do is cut this thing up to prepare it in the spatchcock style. So what we have here is about a 14 pound turkey. Uh, and when we talk about preparing this thing spatchcock style, what that really means is that we need to remove the backbone so we can press this flat and cook it all on one flat surface. So probably the one tool that's really important to have when preparing a big turkey like this is a good pair of poultry shears. What you're gonna do with those shears is come right along the side of the backbone and start cutting up toward the neck. Gonna cut all the way through to the opening and then flip this thing around, go back down the other side. All right, so backbone is now removed. You can save that, add it to your turkey stock a little later. So in order to get this thing to lay flat when we flip it over, we need to make sure that we break through this bone right here up at the top. So I like to just give it a little snip to help it along the way. And then when we flip this over, just give some pressure on the breast and it pops flat. So now you've got your legs and your breast that are sitting all about even, which makes this cook really evenly. We've got some excess skin from the neck here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that off. And then when we get to the back side, you can choose here how much work you really wanna do. If you want to just roll with it just the way it is, totally fine, you can still get some seasoning back here. But if you wanna do a little bit of extra work now, it'll make some things easier when this bird is fully cooked. So for example, if we trim kind of along the breast cavity here, up toward the top of these ribs, we can cut out some of this stuff so that we don't have to work around it later. So there's sort of these flaps of tissue that aren't really meat, they aren't really skin. We can get rid of these things by completely cutting those out of there. I'm not gonna eat it later anyway. Just working back and forth with a nice sharp boning knife and your shears to cut through any bones. We'll clean up the edges here, some extra fat that we don't need. And then you'll find that when you get to the edge of the thigh here, there's some bone from right alongside that backbone that you can get rid of by simply sliding your knife right underneath it. The bone's running here. And we're gonna cut underneath straight out to the end. Work our way back to where the ball joint is from the thigh. See that right there? We'll go right around that ball joint and cut out the rest of that bone. So now you've gotten rid of all that extra bone. This is all just thigh meat around the thigh bone. Gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. So just kind of feel around to make sure that we didn't leave any pieces behind that you'd be biting into unexpectedly. So now that we've done all that trimming, these thighs and legs are just connected by the skin. So be careful of that, but also keep in mind when we go to carve this thing later, one easy cut to get it off of there. One more thing we can do here before we get our brining process started is to remove the wishbone. And you can actually see it sitting right underneath the surface right there and it's really easy to remove. You're just gonna find that bone, slide your knife right underneath it, and follow it out to the end of the breast. Then you'll follow it back down to where the two meet. And just kinda gonna hold, grab a hold of that and pull it out. There we go. So there's your wishbone removed. Now you can cut slices straight out of this breast. Now today we're gonna to be utilizing the dry brining technique, which basically means instead of submerging this bird in a salty water solution, we're gonna put the salt right on the surface of the bird. Now it does a lot of the same things that a wet brine does, but because the bird's not submerged in liquid, the skin's not taking on all that liquid, it renders much better and gives you a better texture during the cook. So we're gonna use our brine base that we use for our wet brines as well. So this is salt, sugar, some savory flavors, onion and garlic. We're gonna start with a half cup of that. 
but we don't want to miss out on the opportunity to infuse some of these Cajun flavors. So we're also going to do a quarter cup of the brand new Cajun fusion seasoning. So lots of great savory flavors. You can see the red, the chili coming out of that paprika. The Cajun Fusion is a brand new rub from Cattleman's Grill that we developed with Cattleman's with this turkey in mind. It's got all the classic herbs and spices that you think of with Cajun and that nice mild kick of heat from the chilies. So we're gonna transfer the bird to a wire rack and we'll start with the back side here. We're gonna take our dry brine and just hit all of these surfaces. And kind of work it under the skin a little bit as well. We'll flip this and get the other side. So we'll do some right on the flush there. And then the rest will go right over the skin. You may not need all of it. We want to get good coverage, but you don't have to cake it on. It's going to do its job just by getting full coverage. And it's really as simple as that. Now the key to letting this dry brine do its work is just time. Carve out some space in the refrigerator because this needs to sit in there open and uncovered for 48 hours. Well, our Cajun turkey has been dry brining for 48 hours now, so we're gonna get this thing injected with our Cajun butter, but before we do that, I wanna fire up the grill. Today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Classic 3 ceramic grill. We're gonna get our coal bed started so we can stabilize this grill around 300 degrees. We're gonna start with a bed of lump charcoal. Get a couple fire starters in here. So taking a look at our dry brine turkey now, you can see how that skin is really tightened up and that's what's going to allow us to kind of crisp the outside. So what's happened during that dry brining process is, is it starts to pull out that moisture and then it mixes as those pores open up and that moisture is allowed to come back in with the seasoning. And to add to that flavor and moisture, we're going to mix up a Cajun butter and inject it right into the bird. So our Cajun butter injection is going to be made up of three ingredients. We've got a half cup of unsalted butter here. We're gonna add a half cup of hot sauce, and I'm really excited to show you guys this one. This is a new one from Cattleman's Grill. It's the Pit Fire Hot Sauce. So pretty excited about the Pit Fire Hot Sauce. It's a new one from Cattleman's Grill we've been working on. This is really just your go-to red mash vinegar hot sauce. So it's great for buffalo wings, great for Cajun foods, just any everyday use. So into the shaker, and then we're gonna add a tablespoon of our Cajun seasoning. Now the butter, I've melted it, but I've let it kind of cool off a little bit because if it's too hot, it's just gonna run right out of the bird. And we're gonna lose some of that, but it's fine because it's actually gonna start to base the outside of the bird as well as being injected into the meat. So we're gonna start right here in the breast, inject our needle, kind of poke around to create a pocket, give it a squeeze or two. And I'm just gonna hold that on there for a second because as this chills out, it's just kind of stuck in there. And like I said, we'll see a little bit come back out, but that's all right. We're going to continue to do this all around these breasts, injecting our flavor and our fat into the lean white meat. You can just see those breasts plump up as they take on that Cajun butter. We'll go ahead and give the thighs some love over here as well and the legs. They really don't need as much fat to them because they're nice dark meat, very moist. But we can still give them some of that flavor. Give the wings a pump. And then the rest, I would just go ahead and fill out the breasts with. All right, so we've got lots of flavors going on. I'm just gonna even out the color on the surface of the skin with a little bit more of that Cajun fusion but otherwise this thing is ready to go on the grill. Now we got the KJ dialed in right around 300 degrees. It's all set up for indirect cooking with that slow roller in place. So let's get that turkey on the grill. We've got the grates in place at the highest setting on the divide and conquer system. So we get a little bit of distance between the radiant heat coming off the top of that slow roller. Our bird's gonna go directly on the grate. And we're not running any wood chunks today. We're just gonna be smoking with the charcoal, the lump charcoal itself, so we get a nice clean browning on the outside of the bird. 
and say this 14 pound bird looks like it was meant to fit this KJ perfectly. Well, our Cajun bird's been smoking away for about an hour and 45 minutes now. We're starting to get some of that color, but really we're seeing the internal temperature rise. We're at about 145 in the deepest part of the breast right now. So what I wanna do is I wanna open the airflow wide open on this Kamado Joe. We're gonna crank up the temperature to get a little bit of extra browning over these last 10 degrees and pull this thing off about 155 to 160. Oh yeah, that skin's starting to really crisp up. Getting firm in the breast. It smells incredible, getting all those Cajun herbs and aromas coming out of there. But we could use just a little bit more color, so like I said, let's open up the airflow. Well, it's been about two hours and 15 minutes total cook time now, and our bird is ready to come off. So we've got some really great golden brown skin there. You can see how that's just crisped up. If we temp here in the breast, yep, right in between. 155 and 160, we're gonna call that perfect. Just get all those Cajun herbs and spices coming up out of that. The skin looks so good on this thing. I'm really excited to taste it, but we need to let it rest for about 20 or 30 minutes. Well, let's go ahead and get this turkey carved up. So getting the legs and thighs off is real easy. You've just got this one piece of skin here, and that's separated. And then if you like to take that apart, you're gonna follow right down in that crease to where the ball joint is. Oh yeah, that is so tender. So there's your thigh, there's your leg. So now I'm just gonna carve off some of this breast meat. We'll come in underneath and start to carve that away. Look at all that Cajun butter that we injected. You can see in the middle of that breast. And this stuff is just juicy. Look at that juice coming out of there as we start to carve that away. And we got the flavor all the way down to the deepest part of that breast meat. Now I definitely want to get a taste of this skin and some of that dark meat. So I'm going to carve into that thigh. Oh man. Skin bites right through. Great texture on it. The meat's juicy. And that dark meat's done enough that it's velvety. When we, we talk about temperatures in dark meat, we want it higher than it is in the white meat. And we didn't really pay attention to that during the cook because I know that the white meat takes longer to get up to temperature. But this dark meat's probably in that 175 range. And that's really where you like it because if you pull this at 160 in the dark meat, it's still chewy. It hasn't really broken down. And that's because it's so much fattier than the white meat is. So once we get it just a little bit higher, it just becomes velvety. I mean, it really starts to fall apart. And that's where I love it. So that dark meat, it just chunks right up now, kind of at that pulling temperature. Super juicy. The aroma is incredible. The flavors are right on. And finishing that breast meat, say at like 155, 160, you got so much juice left, especially since we injected it with all that Cajun butter. If you're looking to do something a little bit different this holiday season with your turkey, I think the Cajun bird is a great way to go. But you could be eating this thing year round. I mean, there's no season for Cajun turkey. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com or better yet, we'll throw a link in the video description down below to check out our turkey kits. One click, buy everything you need for this recipe. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.